just riding a Segway to Jaffa, Tel Aviv. This year has been crazy. From New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary to the One Life Network, God has allowed me to do evangelistic apologetics all across America and really around the world. And as the dust has settled on this golden age of Christian apologetics, I'm really encouraged to see that the inclusion of evangelism with Christian apologetics ideas is sinking into the minds of not just preachers, but Christian apologists. First of all, we have a deep value around here that we believe you can bring your brain to church, that the Christian faith is intellectually beautiful and defensible in the marketplace of ideas. And one of the things that Braxton does is he is an apologist for the Christian faith around the country, defending it in intellectually. I mean, what better reason to defend Christianity but that people might believe Christianity is true? And in my particular field, it, it became Christian apologetics. I had a close friend who had become an atheist and he had been challenging my faith, been a little bit antagonistic about it. And so I wanted to learn what the answers were and how to respond to someone like that. And to a certain degree, everything that came after that in my life was really an attempt to try and find a way to reach him and people like him. That's the ministry that I believe God's called me to, and the past few weeks I've been able to live it out one event right after the other. First, I traveled to North Carolina in the American South, and I gotta tell you, I loved being back in the South, where I come from, God's country. But I'm in Asheville, North Carolina right now, and I am excited to be on the road preaching the gospel again in the American South. But there's something about being in the mountains hard to explain. And I was able to do some preaching and some evangelism with a little bit of apologetics principles mixed in because that's kind of the way I do it when I go do these local church meetings. And I took time on the way back to just relax in the Tennessee countryside, kind of soak in that landscape. Not a bad little workout. <sighs> but then it was time. I'd be traveling to Israel with a group called the Israel Collective. These guys were awesome. And there were all kinds of incredible people on the trip that you know from different kinds of things like I Am Second and uh, people who are doing pro-life activism, you know, just all kinds of things that are somehow loosely related to Christian apologetics. But I'm gonna leave someone out, so here's everybody. And I made a lot of new friends, but honestly, to be the guy who's sort of the new kid on the block at these mainline apologetics conferences, it was kind of cool to be hanging around with specific people that I've been reading their stuff for 15, 16, 17 years. I call them the A-team of Christian apologetics. People like Sean McDowell, Mary Jo Sharp, Mike Lycona. What I love about this passage, Paul says, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mark Middleburg. Mark Middleburg. Again, oh yeah, William Lane Craig. Okay, I just landed in JFK in New York City, and I got on the shuttle, and who are the only two people on the shuttle? Dr. William Lane Craig and his beautiful wife, Jan. <laughs> this trip's gonna be awesome. 
For me, I'd been to Israel two or three times, and don't get me wrong, I, I really still enjoy the phenomenal experience of being in the land where much of the Bible took place. Yeah, we can have enough time. But for me, this time around, it was being with these people. Everybody else had that life-changing transcendental experience where now when they read the Bible, it's got that whole new dimension to it. But for me, it was the dawning realization that God had allowed me to move from a youth pastor on through the stages of apologetics geekdom until I was at this point, this moment. Speaking at conferences with and traveling the world with these people who had been my heroes. The bottom line is, you're out there. You're an apologetics geek right now. You're reading Craig, Lycona, Sharp, Middleburg, maybe Hunter. You should follow God's leadership and be what he wants you to be. But the point is simple. If it could happen for this loudmouth, leather-lunged, red-faced evangelist, if it could happen for this kid from the South, for whom the only ivory towers he ever saw were in films. It could happen for you. It's not about money or fame. It's about serving the Lord. But maybe he's gifted you for this. Evangelism and apologetics go hand in glove, and we'd need more evangelistic apologists who admire these defenders of the faith more than the rich and shallow of Christianity. We need defenders who are interested in winning arguments, but more interested in winning souls. Maybe that's...